Hello, everybody, and welcome to this series on working effectively with Conformic Creator. My name is Stefan Schultz, and I'm the CTO of Conformic, and at the same time, I'm also the product owner of Conformic Creator. Today, we're going to be talking about working effectively with an Eclipse user interface. Please note this video here is not intended to teach you anything about how to actually create models for a given application. It's just actually intended to show you various tool features that you may or may not be aware of so far. So in order to take this session, we expect you have a basic understanding of using Conformic Creator and you've attended or passed our online Conformic Greenbelt training. So let's get started. So about Eclipse, well, you may wonder, why do we talk about Eclipse and why don't we talk about Conformic Creator? Well, actually, Eclipse is not just the name of a natural phenomena where the moon moves in front of the sun and everything blacks out. It's also the name of an open source platform which has been around for years, uh, which can be used to create integrated development environments, so-called IDEs. So, Conformic adopted this platform years ago, and as of that day, it has been Eclipse-based. So Eclipse provides the basic look and feel for Conformic products, such as Creator, but also Transformer. So what you can see here, what's typically Eclipse, is these three buttons here, the so-called perspectives, and then you have this perspective itself, which is composed of different views and editors, and we're gonna show that in a demo very soon. So one thing off the bat, good to know is, that Eclipse does like to provide a lot of information on the screen, so it's good to have a big screen. So I'm presenting this to you from my laptop, but I have a 13 inch screen, so I've connected a bigger screen to my machine to work with Conformic in a better way. So um, basically, here's some ideas about the resolution you should be using no matter which screen size you have. Also, it's useful to have uh, a let's say modern machine when it comes to the RAM size, uh, not only for the Eclipse part, but also for the test generation. But if you, of course, our tool works with less than 16 GB RAM, but you may get some sluggish experience in our user interface if you work with anything lower than that. So what are we gonna talk about then here in this uh, session? So we're gonna keep this short. We're gonna introduce you to perspectives, views, and editors. We're gonna show you how you can work with perspectives, how you can you optimize the layout, what can you, how can you move around, open, close, find views, uh, how can you bring everything back to normal, and then also talk about all the gizmos we have in editing and creating especially model diagrams and finding stuff in them as well. So let's get started. So here you see the tool as it greets you after you install it and you don't have any project installed, right? So what you can see in the top, as I said before, you have the different perspectives. A perspective is basically a collection of views and possibly also an editor. Now in Eclipse terminology, an editor is actually something where you can draw. Um, now let us maybe uh, open an example project, simple web application for that matter. So, okay, here we are. So, um, what we see here is a couple of views now populated with information. Uh, let's also open up maybe a, a diagram, like the login diagram. So now the diagram is open in the editor. Uh, then we have some views around it that update based on what I do in the editor. So for example, when I click on this action, I see the properties you show me the details of it. Here I have a view that tells me where are the objects in my model. And you know I can navigate to the object uh, right here. There it is. Uh, there's another view that shows me problems if I have any model mistakes, etc., in my model. And there is a view how I can drag in all actions. Now this is how everything comes up in detail. And also note, please, the Project Explorer. That's really your control center. That's where all your main things are, like files, for example. Note that not everything is exactly a file that gets an icon here, but files do play a big role here. Um, but anyway, think of it as your file explorer object, your, your key thing, which you see also in other views, the project explorer is there. Now, 
when it comes to the for, to these uh, diag diagrams and reading these diagrams, uh, you may see that in some cases, for example, the views are maybe not big enough to contain all of the information. Like when I click on this decision node now, this is a form here that has two fields. Now, can you imagine what it looks like when you have 10 fields and you have a couple of values listed? So obviously you can drag these views, make them bigger, but please also note when you drag them, you can completely reposition a view. You can put it anywhere you want and do all kinds of crazy stuff. You can also even say this view should become a tab here. And then you can see the stuff over there. So you're free to rearrange and reposition the views in any place you want them. Now I feel this is a good place for the view. I will keep it there because there are Especially when we have lots of data, we can see that a bit better, right? And now everything works as before. So we have the views, we have the editor, um, and we can resize. And the palette is a little bit different. This kind of can be collapsed by clicking on this icon. We will talk about this when we're going into the editor part of this session. So what about if you accidentally delete a view, especially property is quite important view, and sometimes you think you kind of just lost it. And the question is, where do I find it? How do I get it back? So it's in the Windows view, go to Show View, and there we see Properties view is back, right? So other views that are also could be helpful uh, are here, and here you also see some more of the standard Eclipse views, like this general views are standard Eclipse. Whereas the conforming specific views that we have, in principle, in any perspective, you can have any view and you can lay that out to your liking. The tool will remember the next time you open it how you have laid out it before you closed it. And that way, always bring it back to the state that you have been before. If you want to get really crazy, again, uh, you can change the way how these views are arranged. They're meant to take you through the process of model creation, test generation, test review. Right, you can even, if you want, add, if you lose a view, right, if you close it, you can bring it back. Um, you can move these views, like I said before. You can even add your own custom view with your own custom layout if you really want to get crazy. Yes. So another thing is when you're working, let's say on your laptop, you're traveling, you don't have a big screen with you, what you can then also do is you can make these screen the these view will consume the whole uh, screen size in this way edit and especially in the model editing there's a special feature that you can bring in uh, you know this properties view but you have to bring it back whenever you have selected it right and it will appear in the place that you have it otherwise to get back you click this restore button and there we have it so that's everything very useful to know about you know um, using perspectives so next, we're going to talk about working with Eclipse Editor, so creating new diagrams. So how about we create a new diagram? Let's create a test diagram. So I have this empty diagram. I need to really, really got to go soon. Work's closing. So how can I quickly grow a diagram? So there's, for different types of users, there's different kinds of approaches. So in the top, you have this toolbar. I would call it for the classic desktop application Windows user right where you can just click and drag and actually you can even size it in the same step and then you connect it up by using the anchors right so this is one way then there's the drag and drop folks so for the drag and drop folks there's this palette right so you can drag out but then you cannot size at the same time you have that in a second step right and boom there we have this connection now similarly there's even a hover bar so if you leave the mouse still you get also the ability to select items. This hover bar is more useful in a structure diagram editor than it is in the activity diagram editor in my view, but I leave that judgment to you. Uh, notice also for those dra dra drag and drop fans, when you, you can actually drag and drop the actions from this lower half, if you have here, for example, anything in this model, you can select that as long as it's an action and drag it up. Right. So um, similarly, if you don't like dragging and dropping, you can just select it from here. Also, the second way how to add an action. Then the another interesting way is the drawing to completion. So if you just drag out the anchor without having an object, just release your mouse button, you get a couple of choices like, what is it that you want to make? And then that helps you also to kind of quickly 
connect or create, a, you know, a diagram. And boom, there we go. So now I have a diagram, I have some actions. It's of course not in a state that can generate tests, but that's for now secondary. You see, I spent a lot of time rearranging it. What about I do that automatically, right? So for this, we have right click on the canvas, arrange diagram, let's pick hierarchical diode. Then what we see puts it in vertical manner. Let's say we love horizontal. We have to select horizontal first, go then again, see now it's selected. Boom. Okay. Now I can move this diagram around and do it like this. So these are a few ideas here how you could speed up creating diagrams. Obviously, uh, as we will talk in later sessions, there's the importers, which are the ultimate thing to create these diagrams. You should not be creating everything by hand, but just for the record, there is also the same features available for the structure diagram. So I can create a form. I, sorry, a, a screen, I can put in a form and look then the beautiful thing. Sorry. If you double click on this and you get here even the text box with the hover bar. So I took the screen from the menu bar, I took drag and drop the form and then I used the hover bar to add the text box. Right? So anyway. All works in the same way. By the way, also here these connectors. So maybe and a useful thing is that uh, you can see you can create these connectors in two ways. The one thing is if I have an enumeration, for example, that requires a type, then I can use this drop down here to select it, and it will automatically draw that error. Or if I don't like this, I can actually use the same drag and drop. It must be the top of the box and drop it right, and now it's connected as well. So two ways of how to do this. Let's just uh, save this all. Let's remove this diagram. Okay, so now I'm back in my initial state, my initial model. So the final thing I want to talk about now is like, let's say you have your best friend and he send us your model and you want to really figure out like, uh, you know, where are the users in this diagram? You have some hunch about it, it's a login diagram. So what you can do here also is you can click Control F, right? And you get the find dialog. Now, um, basically here, you can look for user and what we, you can say ignore the case and then basically it will find all the occurrences of this word in your diagram right so find is always uh, related to the diagram and as we can see it goes to the actions it does not go through the properties view it does not go into other diagrams find is always by definition in eclipse only for the diagram. Now, if you want to find something across diagrams, actually Project Explorer is quite useful. So for example, there was some variable um, about items that you needed to find, and then you can actually see here, oh, here's an entered item variable, maybe it's this one. So if you double click, or even single click, you get this diagram open for you with the box in the focus. This is where the diagram variable is, right? And in here, again, these are the activities you get, fidelity down to the action. So this is also a very useful way of how to do a find. Yes, and that is basically it for today. Um, that leaves me with the final slide on this session with the summary. So I thank everybody for watching and I hope this has been useful and you've learned a few tips and tricks how to make your life faster and better. And we hope to see you again on this second video in this series.